Storm Floris brought with it strong winds and heavy outbreaks of rain, and there's another Atlantic low on its way. Now, it's unlikely to be quite as severe, but after that, could there be a heat wave on the horizon? Well, let's start off by taking a look at the bigger picture. And here, shown by the arrows and the pink shaded colours, that's the position of our jet stream, the fast-flowing ribbon of air high up in the atmosphere. And what you'll notice is that it's a rather straight and zonal pattern. And what we tend to find with this kind of jet stream formation is that it picks up areas of low pressure from the Atlantic and drags them towards us here in the UK. And that's kind of what's happening later Wednesday through into Thursday is an area of low pressure just to the southeast of Iceland, dragging in frontal systems, so a chance of clouds and rain. But really noticed how many isobars are on the chart here, particularly to the northwest. So not only a chance of rain, also some windy weather, particularly across western Scotland. But all eyes really are on this area of low pressure just in the western part of the Atlantic. And this is actually tropical storm Dexter, and as it moves its way towards the country, it weakens so, so then it becomes extropical storm Dexter as it moves its way towards us in the UK over the coming days, not really reaching western parts of the country until later Sunday through into Monday. But what's really interesting about this feature is as it does gradually move its way closer, it becomes elongated, and we actually see two separate areas of low pressure, the one to the south being extropical storm Dexter. And that does really make it quite tricky to forecast and depending what happens with Dexter really amplifies what could potentially happen as we head into next week. Before we get on to that, though, I do just want to draw your attention to Thursday, because many of us are likely going to be waking up to quite a cloudy and damp picture, particularly in Wales, parts of Devon and Cornwall. But this system is mostly a weakening feature, so as it drifts its way southeastwards, any rain tending to break, break up become quite light. But it is likely to be quite cloudy across central areas and parts of the south. And there's also a risk of showers, once again, particularly across the northwest, where it's going to be fairly breezy, but it's not really until the afternoon that we'll start to see those winds really strengthen around those exposed coasts. But for many, by the afternoon, it will start to brighten up. Much lighter winds across the south too, so feeling more pleasant, particularly where you pick up any brighter spells. Highs reaching around 23 to 24 degrees Celsius. Now for Friday, the end of the week, many areas across Wales uh, England and Wales are going to see a much brighter start, plenty of sunny spells. There might just be some hazy sunshine, particularly as we head into the afternoon and we start to see that convective cloud build. But otherwise, it should remain mostly dry. But in the north, it's likely to be fairly blustery. Some quite strong winds at times, even a chance of gales across the exposed northwest. But these should be mostly isolated, but there are also going to be outbreaks of rain. This could turn heavy and blustery at times. So we're almost a north-south split in the weather, but it's really across Scotland where we're likely to see those wet and windy conditions. And elsewhere, it should be mostly dry. A slight uptick in those temperatures too, highs reaching around 24 to 25 degrees Celsius across the southeast. Then if you have any plans over the weekend, particularly as it's still the summer holidays for many of us, well, once again, there's going to be lots of dry weather around. And we'll see a slow increase in those temperatures over the weekend too, this time reaching around 25 to 26 degrees Celsius in the south, but always across the north, always that much windier there. Also a chance of some heavy, possibly even blustery showers, so always slightly cooler in that wind and under the cloud. But elsewhere, once again, a fairly pleasant start to the weekend. And conditions aren't too dissimilar as we head into summer. Sunday. Once again, much of England and Wales are starting to really feel that heat on Sunday. Temperatures pushing into the high 20s, but still, once again, across Scotland, possibly even parts of Northern Ireland, cooler, cloudy, with some heavy outbreaks of rain and also some strong winds at times. So, yes, many seeing a dry and bright weekend, but there is also some rain on the cards. So, to summarise this weekend, yes, often wet and windy in the northwest, mostly dry in the south, but by the time we reach Sunday, it is going to feel locally hot in that sunshine. So, do take Take care as we'll start to see those UV levels, UV levels rise. Then how about after the weekend? Obviously, I've mentioned the storm, and that will push its way closer later Sunday through into Monday, becoming that double feature. But there is still some variation in the models as to exact track of these lows and the positioning too. So that's really going to counteract whereabouts we see the strongest of the winds and the heaviest outbreaks of rain. But nevertheless, the models do generally um, agree that there's going to be two centres of the low. And that does mean it's likely that we'll start to see that wet and possibly quite windy 
windy weather start to push in from the west. Also a chance of showery outbreaks across some eastern areas, but there's still fairly low confidence as to once, as I say, exactly where the heaviest of rain is going to be and where the strongest winds are going to be. But it's likely there'll be some brighter interludes. It's likely that it should be fairly hot in places, particularly across central areas and parts of the southeast, where by Monday there's a good chance we could start to push into the low 30s. But as I say, there is some model variation as to the exact track of Tropical Storm Dexter. And if we show by the uh, green and also the blue colours, these are the potential tracks that the ensemble members of our models are starting to show. And taking a look at the green and blue lines, you can see most of them are drifting their way across the Atlantic and slightly further north, pushing into parts of the UK. But not all agree. In fact, the American model, GFS, shown by the pink colours, does have it drifting slightly further south, more staying towards the Azores. So there's still a chance, a low chance that it might not even reach us altogether, but nevertheless, many of the models are actually agreeing that there's going to be some wet and windy weather pushing its way early into next week. Not only this, but there's a chance of some quite hot temperatures too. And taking a look at these graphics, actually it kind of looks like that a warm plume moving in from the near continent, but actually that heat source is drifting its way across the Atlantic and it starts to circulate towards the southeast. And that means we will start to see those temperatures rise, particularly from Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and possibly Wednesday as well. And this is shown by what we call our box and whisker plots as we head further into the next couple of weeks. And the wider these boxes get, the more spread they're is in the model, so more uncertainty, you could say, as we head into the future. But for both northern and southern areas, as we head further into next week, there is a slight increase in those temperatures, so a good signal we could definitely start to see temperatures push into the high 20s and possibly even into the low 30s. So let's take a chance of seeing 30, let's take a look at the chances of seeing 30 degrees as we head into next week. So Monday, it doesn't look like it's going to be quite as widespread on Monday. More localised spots just about reaching 30 degrees Celsius, shown by these small little yellow colours here across parts of the southeast. So London, for example, could start to see 30 degrees on Monday. Heading into Tuesday, some slightly darker colours, so more of a probability that we could see a few more areas starting to see 30 degrees Celsius, possibly a degree or two higher. At this point, we're looking at around 10% chance of pushing into kind of 32, 33, possibly even 34 degrees Celsius. And Wednesday, once again, particularly across central areas and parts of the south and southeast, it's likely we'll see temperatures of around 30 degrees, possibly a degree or two higher. But once again on Wednesday, it's still very much dependent on how quickly Storm Dexter could potentially push through, how quickly the wind and rain will push through as well. And it's still around a week away, so definitely one we need to keep an eye on. How long that wet spell could potentially stick around for. Nevertheless, it does look like it's at the moment it's going to be fairly brief and towards the end of next week we're likely to see a return of the Azores high stretching its way into western areas and that allows once again that Atlantic mobility to take hold. So it's possible that we'll see a return of that northwest southeast split. So more wet and windy weather possibly pushing into parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, possibly even northern parts of England. But across many areas of central and southern England it's likely to remain fairly dry and bright. Sort of typical summer time conditions. So into next week, yes, a chance of a brief hot spell, mostly across central and southern parts, and a return of that westerly flow, so more areas of low pressure potentially or frontal systems moving in from the west, but it's still very much dependent on the exact track of extropical storm Dexter as it should become over the next few days. But of course, we'll be here across YouTube and our social media channels to keep you updated.